Hello once again everyone. Finally part 2 of credit grinding is now here. There will be more information that I have not covered yet that will be useful to you. Go ahead and have your ears open and let's get to it. Crew. Now there's players who join crews, some don't. But having a crew is actually very beneficial than you may think. There's so many rewards you can earn. Things you can sell even. Like crew dungeons or even rankings. Now rankings is something I want to mention. It actually gives something called crew dungeon reward box. If your crew is placed at least 1 to 100 on the leaderboard, which shouldn't be that hard, then on Friday at reset, you will earn that box. It gives a chance of earning lots of credits if you're lucky. In order to be in the top 100, it's best to be active in the game and just do as much as contribution in the crew. At least enough to where you're on the board. So if you're interested in joining a crew, feel free to join our crew Sky, currently level 4, halfway to level 5. Just go apply in game and press the L key, type in the name Sky, and we will let you in as soon as we see it. Selling items. Now of course, we all know that selling things is one of the best ways to get credits quickly. However, there may be some things that you may not know that is in high demand and sells for a lot. Well, I'm going to tell you just the items that are perfect for selling. There's items like Performant Fabric Relaxer. Now this item is actually somewhat difficult to get depending on your luck with upgrading costume. In order to receive this, you'll need to upgrade any costume piece to 3 stars. Whether it's accessories, effects, as long as it's a costume that's 3 star. Now, I'm not saying to dismantle something pricey like your zenith pieces. That's definitely not a good idea unless you know more than 100% that you won't play that character anymore and you're just using it to sell relaxers. Anyway, relaxers would get you about 6 million to 9 million each, depending on how the market is feeling on that day. Though so remember the more people put those up, the lower it'll get. So I suggest to be patient if things aren't selling because one is higher than yours. Trust me, those things sell fairly quickly. Materials is another thing. That's something you might sell by the time you're basically done with your gear. Though most materials mainly sell for about 100k each. Like reanimators or sea breeze. Now I'm sure you basically know this one already. You'll need to stack on a bunch of them if you're actually willing to get a good amount. Here's another item you can sell, but it's pretty expensive to craft. The profit is definitely worth it though. These accessories are in reverse theater. Go to the crafting machine and go to the dream theater reverse tab. Scroll all the way down and you'll see the box called Code Beezlebub Jewelry Box. Crafting this box gives you a random chance of getting one of the three things that are in that box. Keep in mind though, the reason why it sells for so much is basically because it's end game accessories that you need. So make sure you're either keeping it or selling it. This means you're crafting the box for 100 mil and when selling it, it sells for, get this, 400 mil to 700 mil. The grind is definitely worth it, whether you're keeping it or selling it. Union Watch. Now for this part, it's gonna go by quickly, but just to get this one out of the way, since it's something that gives credits, small, but it's something you can do on the side or lastly, you can do this with leveling new characters as well. Now Union Watch actually resets daily, so be sure to do them when you can. How Union Watch works, it basically gives you a side mission to complete a certain dungeon. It'll have a red exclamation point that you'll see on that specific dungeon. Or maybe enhance something. You have to complete those 5 tasks it tells you to do on that day. It also gives XP when completing it if you aren't level capped yet. So that's killing 2 birds with 1 stone. Union watch rewards do tend to change, so if it doesn't really give anything useful to you, then no need to do it even though sometimes you may complete it unintentionally. But hey, that's good either way, right? 
events. Now, I was thinking of telling you all this in the beginning, but I figured not to since it's something that happens occasionally. Events normally happen in about 2-3 to three months or more, depending on how the staff is during that time. Though, I think it's still something good to tell since it'll earn you a great profit. When it comes to events, you get great items. Many items that are useful to you. Sometimes you may get in more than once or have more than enough and decide to sell it. However, this topic does require a lot of patience. Now to generalize this and not put it into one specific event, basically you craft the item more than what you need and plan on selling it after two months. After one month, it's not really a good idea to sell since most people end up selling event items at that time and the price ends up decreasing dramatically. Even two months may not even be good enough. Just be patient and wait till the price is back to its original price. Right now, for example, there is a spring event and we were able to craft Transcendent Stone Preservatives. And it's now been about two months and the prices are about 2.7 to 3 million each. When it first started selling during the event, it was 1 million to 2 million for a long time. Now, before the event, and before all of this, Tristan and Stone Preservatives were all about 7 mil to 9 million. Basically the same amount as relaxers that I mentioned on the topic of selling items. Even if this may seem as a hassle, it's something that's basically being done in the background, you can say. Just think of it this way, the event is basically something extra. So think of it as something that's happening behind the scenes, something that's timed. It's worth it in the end. I was given advice by an old friend about earning money through things like events, that, which takes patience. Using more than one account is also a good idea if you are able to play in two computers. Using one is also fine as long as you have an actual trustworthy friend that gets on your main account and gathers it up for you. Now this is very important. Keep in mind, giving your account to people is never a good idea. Unless you've known them for a long, 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 long time. Where you know the person well enough to trust them. So keep in mind, it's never good to hand out your account to someone. Especially when it comes to a grinding game like Closers. They even have your parent do it for you and have it on another computer. And they can do it for you. Remember to think of it though carefully. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, then it's best not to. Housing and gardening. Now when it comes to housing and gardening, you can get really useful items like a lot of crystals or a lot of gold statues or even mallet crystals. This feature with housing and gardening, you can go to the crafting table and it crafts things like accessories and more, much more. The gardening is actually much more friendly with credit rewards, like planting down these plants, it gives you lots of credits, depending on how nice your RNG is to you and depending on what plant you actually put down, because different plants actually give different types of crystals or statues, depending on which one was more expensive to put down. When it comes to housing, you do something called exploration when it's basically putting your characters in a certain slot and it gives you different rewards. Now this is important. I suggest not putting in a character that you're going to play or else you won't be able to do dungeons while on exploration. It'll have a certain amount of time depending on which one you put them in. The first one will be one hour and then after that it'll be a lot higher than what it was. So make sure you only put in different characters like alts or sometimes your secondary if you know you aren't going to play them within a certain amount. Now depending on your character's level, it'll give a higher chance of earning the reward. Keep in mind that in the first exploration option, it wouldn't matter what level the character is actually. You'll always have a 100% chance of earning the rewards. Now pets actually come in handy on this. Same concept goes with them when it comes to their level, so the higher their level, the higher the chance. Remember if you're going to put the, your pet in that slot, make sure it's not your main pet or anything so you know you won't go without it, at least for an hour or more. 
and housing when you complete 20 explorations you can go to the bottom left where it says exploration mileage you click on it and it'll show you a list of items you can choose from you can earn 10 mallet crystals from this definitely a good thing to do on the side when you put your characters in exploration they will earn XP as well, so it'll always be nice to put in characters that you have, like side characters and ults. Secondary sometimes if you know you won't play them for about an hour or more. Now this is something that people normally forget about, so it's really not that important, but it's something that you can keep in mind. Dungeons. Now I'm sure I've mentioned dungeons before, but there's certain dungeons I actually forgot to mention. Here's the thing, where Timeout is basically located, there will be two sides, one on the left and one on the right. Those dungeons are actually called Nightmare World. The reason why I mention these is because you can sell boxes. Boxes that are colored, which is basically called the new blue box, the new red box, the new purple box, the new yellow, new green, new black, and new dark. Keep in mind though that the prices do tend to fluctuate with this item. So you do need to be lucky or have a really good amount of each box if you want to be lucky with the result of the credits. Though be sure to keep some because you do need them. Anyway, Nightmare World Dungeons can also drop you Nightmare World Ingredient Boxes. I've actually mentioned this in a live stream where I was grinding these boxes. They don't drop for every run you do, there's sadly a chance to drop. There are 14 runs total, 7 during the week if you have special benefits like VIP or special operation support ticket that gives an extra run. Eight during the weekend. So basically, if you don't have any of the benefits, which I suggest crafting the ticket, you'll have six during the week and seven in the weekend. These boxes that I'm talking about right now give you 700k. So be sure to grind Nightmare World if you actually feel up to it. Now there's dungeons you may be running for contribution. So those I have not mentioned. Specifically are Bearland, Abyssal Throne, and there's many more. They mostly drop Malik boxes or crystal. You'll notice that you'll be earning them. Also, I did mention BB size before, but when it comes to the dungeon like that, be sure to use item drop potion, you'll have a better chance for obtaining crystals rather than statues. Now I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you're actually looking forward to more credit grinding and you're still having trouble, feel free to always look back if you need help. But there will always be more that I'll be uploading if I actually find more things that you can do. Which more than likely I will have part 3 coming out eventually. So feel free to look forward to that. Thank you very much for watching and have a safe day.